practiced that all day. Right. You probably did. I would like to thank everyone for being here tonight at, for the public uh, hearing of the Highland Township Government Study Commission on August 29th at the Highland Township Municipal Building at 7 p.m. Um, we will have 7 15. a... 7.15. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, I fixed that. 7.15 p.m. Uh, we will have a brief PowerPoint presentation presenting the proposed Highland Township Home Rule Charter. Public comments will be held at the end of the hearing. We ask that you hold all your questions or concerns until that time, as we may answer your questions or concerns in the presentation. Uh, we also ask that you remain that you remain respectful of others. The Highland Township Home Rule Government Study Commission is pleased to present its report of the Home Rule Charter, reflecting an intense effort of extensive study, research, and deliberation by the commission. During the time, this time, the current form of government, Pennsylvania's code, or sec Pennsylvania's second cl class township code was examined, deficiencies identified, and alternatives considered. The proposed Home Rule Charter offers an amended form of local government that the Commission believes will be valuable, a valuable tool on uh, focusing on our needs and provides Highland Township residents the ability to help tailor our form of government and uh, our collective future. The recommended Home Rule Charter will improve our structure of government in many positive ways, but the ultimate benefit is the Home Rule Charter is it will uh, free Highland Township from the limitations currently imposed on it by the Pennsylvania Second Class Township Code. The Highland Township Charter will place control, control of local government in the hands of the citizens so the township may adapt and respond to the challenges facing our community today and into the future. The Commission expresses its appreciation to all those who are assisted in the Commission's work, including but not limited to Grant Township, Cash, Seldef, uh, Chad Nicholson, <coughs> and Mary Long are here with us tonight. Uh, we are grateful for the trust that the voters have placed in, in us and hope for, um, that they will appreciate and uh, embrace the product of our work and study. We will now um, begin with the prayer from Giulio Rossetti, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Lord, guide us through this time of writing the Charter for Highland Township. Help us to make what is wrong right and what was missing found. Be with us all tonight and grant us your blessings. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, yeah. You want everything. I'm going to have to come over there. Yeah, I might not have the straight line coming up. Well, if not, we skip it. Well, we can screw it up. Move the B. So, okay, we'll All right. We're doing the best we can. Do. I know. That's it. I Part of him, I was wondering why. No, oh, we're um, into our introduction, so. Told you we were in You're page two. Roll call, John. Okay, I'm not following. It's okay. Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'd like the commissioners to state their name and here. Uh, John Gurris here. Lloyd Jillings here. Amy Beers here. Judy Orizetti here. 
Matt Vaughn here. Bill Evinger here. Missy Edinger here. All right, now we're going to do a presentation. Mm -hmm. I think we're starting with... Okay, a history lesson. <coughs> Townships were established based on convenient local geographical boundaries within the borders of the 67 encompassing Pennsylvania counties and typically vary in size from 6 to 40 square miles. There are two classifications of townships, first class and second class. Highland Township currently operates as a second-class township and has rules that were given to us by Pennsylvania. A second-class township typically has three supervisors. Township supervisors determine the budget, enact ordinances, and levy taxes. Often they also employ workers, enforce ordinances, and apply expenditures. They oversee police, local roads, zoning, building permits, and taxes. Second-class townships can only act where specifically authorized by state law. Home rule municipalities can act anywhere except where they are specifically limited by state law. When Pennsylvania was chartered in 1681, its proprietor William Penn was given the power to create counties, towns, and other municipalities and the legislator was given sovereignty over them. Abuse of legislative and interference in local matters in the 19th century led to prohibition of special and local laws in the Constitution of, 19, of 1874. Early in the 20th century, the concept of municipal home rule spread across the United States. In 1922, the Pennsylvania Constitution was amended to the legislator and the right to grant cities the right to choose home rule. Philadelphia became the first home rule city in Pennsylvania in 1951. Do you want that screen to be shown? Uh, no, I'm still on three. That's what I thought, okay. Thank you. <laughs> One more. Yeah. There we go. We're getting rehearsed. <laughs> I like, well, <laughs> no, I just figured I'm putting one. <clears throat> so the assembly further, adopt, further adopted the optional third class tr city charter law in 1957-1968. The new constitution declared municipalities to have the right and power to frame and adopt home rule charters. The new a home rule charter and optional plan laws creating that right in the statutes of the Commonwealth was passed in 1972. Home rule charter is basically a constitution for the township replacing the second class township code under which the township currently operates. The Highland Township Government Study Commission is a group of seven volunteers who have charged with the responsibilities of the following tasks. Study. A thorough review of the existing form of government was done to determine if it meets the needs of Highland. Deliberation. Over more than ten meetings, discussions were held to determine these concepts and provisions of law that shall become a part of the new form of governance. The draft. When it is determined that an alternative form of governance was recommended, a home rule charter was prepared. The strength of home rule is its ability to bring local government closer to the people. The Pennsylvania Constitution grants home rule municipalities the right to exercise any powers not denied by their charters, by the Constitution or by the General Assembly. Home rule charters guarantee more citizens' rights then is available to citizens in local governments operate under the second class township code. This is our timeline of what we've done so far. On 524, we had our first meeting. We retained cell depth and formed three different committees. On June 2nd, we formalized our study and we had a conference call with Grant Township. On 623, we consolidated those individual studies. 718, we had a meeting with Highland Supervisors. On 721, we planned for our first public hearing. 731, we had a public hearing on our charter. 84, we voted on the charter and began writing it. On 7, 18, 25, and 26, we took those three days to work on the charter, including tonight. We're having our final, final public meeting.
tomorrow we plan to finalize the charter, vote on whether after tonight vote or whether we're going to submit it and possibly submit an actual home rule charter for Highland Township. The Highland Township Study Commission has put a great deal of effort into studying the various forms of government that could be available to the residents of Highland Township, familiarizing themselves with the Pennsylvania Second Class Township Code, the Pennsylvania Constitution, and the United States Constitution. We focused on the general nature of Pennsylvania Second Class Township Codes and whether it serves our community. The commissioners have spent countless hours online researching other Pennsylvania townships and how they run their local governments and how they deal with their issues. The current township supervisors and home rule study commissioners met for a few questions and answer sessions about, about the way Highland Township is currently operating and how they feel about their positions. We have talked to other townships and cities on the phone, such as Elk Township, York City, and Grant Township, and have looked at other townships' ordinance, ordinances and resolutions, such as the ones from Wetmore Township and Grant Township. The study commission drew conclusions using a set of questions as a guide. How could the second-class township form of government become more economical or efficient under a changed form of government. How could the second class township form of government be strengthened or made more clearly, res clearly responsible or accountable to the people? Does the code provide for the needs and desire of the community and the best represent the principles of our de democratic society? Does the code allow for decisions to be made on issues that are unique to Highland Township? Ways the Pennsylvania Second Class Township Code is adequate. In Article 5, Section 607, the Second Class Township Code states that the Board of Supervisors shall be charged with the general governance of the township in the ex execution, execution of legislative, executive, and administrative powers in order to ensure sound fiscal management and secure the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of the township. By electing a Board of Supervisors made up of township residents with an understanding of local needs, we can ensure the best possible governance of Highland Township. Having a secretary, a chairman, a tax collector, auditors, and a Board of Supervisors, the ongoing and daily needs of the township seem reasonable and adequate to all seven of us. Quite a few practical processes in the second class code were found to be just adequate, but largely we un unanimously found the code to be a one-size-fits-all document. What's wrong with the code? This code is largely written in 1933, and many of today's issues are not addressed in the code. And if the code does not specifically address an issue, it is considered beyond the scope of the Township Board of Supervisors, therefore allowing decisions to be made by people who do not have to live with the consequences of their decisions. The Second Class Township Code is least responsive to its citizens out of the different forms of the government that was studied. There is little to no flexibility in the current code, and there are protections in place for political minority response representation. There are also protections in place that secure the rights of corporations and big bank account holders that are not in the best interest of the landowners and the residents of Highland. The second class township code is the exact opposite of a democratic society as is this allows citizen input and the citizen health and safety are not always a priority. What's missing in the code? Citizen health and safety are not always a priority. The code does not provide protection of the rights of those living in Highland Township. Our world's changing at a very rapid pace, and the code allows industry rights to supersede human rights, therefore endangering the health and welfare of citizens of Highland Township. 
stripping the Highland Township of the ability to voice their concerns and the flexibility to enforce laws and ordinances to protect our lives and properties. The codes are generic. Our laws need to be personalized to the needs and issues of Highland Township in order to be effective. Conclusion of the study. The Pennsylvania Second Class Township Code is adequate to run day-to-day -day operations of Highland Township. But the Elected Government Study Commission agreed that there were some deficiencies. On July 31, 2016, the Highland Township Home Rule Study Commission voted that the Second Class Township Code is not satisfactory to govern Highland Township. Overview of the proposed charter versus the second class township code. The proposed home rule charter allows the people of Highland Township to exercise a level of democracy unavailable through the PA second class township code. The charter is a deeply American act of self-governance and is rights based, meaning that the people who have this right to self-governance that is acknowledged in the United States and Pennsylvania constitutions make that a reality in the community in the community where they live. The second class township code is based on a relatively arbitrary decisions of the Pennsylvania legislature applying a one size fits all approach for governance in over a thousand Pennsylvania communities. A form of government that is rights based and adopted by the high, by the people of Highland Township provides an unparalleled opportunity to participate in the democratic democratic process such as charter amendment through initiative. These processes that are not currently available to us under the second class township code provides the people of Highland Township the tools they need to make decisions and change laws and policies that may have a profound effect on our lives. The similarity between the current and proposed Highland Township government. The number of supervisors, three. Continuance of staff positions, roles such as secretary, treasurer, roadmaster, solicitor, accountants and auditors, and tax collector. Continuance of custodial functions such as fire prevention, road streets and bridges, street lights, public buildings. The current tax structure will be maintained and no new taxes will be levied by the adoption of the charter. Differences between the current and proposed Highland Township governments. Supervisors' term of office will be four years. Uh, vacancies, if any vacancy occurs on the Board of Supervisors, the remaining supervisors shall appoint a successor who appeared on the ballot for the position of supervisor in Highland Township at the most recent election for supervisor within the township. <coughs> the appointment of any supervisor should only be effective until the next available primary, municipal, or general election, at which the, in which time a new supervisor shall be elected to fill the original vacancy for the remainder of the term. Upon the failure of the Board of Supervisors to make an appointment within 30 days after the vacancy occurs, the vacancy shall be filled at the next available primary, municipal, or general election. All residents will have their inalienable and fundamental rights enumerated in a bill of rights, including the rights to be or the right to be fairly taxed. Township voters may exercise initiative powers to amend the charter, and they will have the right to protect the charter or constitution by direct action. An emergency town meeting provision will allow township voters to consider temporary ordinances to protect the township from imminent threats of health, safety, or welfare. Summary of finances. The attached overview and summary is our budget. I'd like to bring special attention to the overview and how we currently are under budget by more than $5,000. Most of our funding has come from generous donations, recycling projects, and fundraisers. Our biggest expense to date has come from advertising. On November 8, 2016, you will see the following question on the ballot. Shall the Home Rule Charter contained in the report dated August 30, 2016 of the Highland Township Government Study Commission 
prepared in accordance with the Home Rule Charter and Optional Plans Law be adopted by Highland Township? A yes vote will mean the adoption of the proposed Highland Township Charter in its entirety. If approved, the Charter will take effect immediately upon approval by the electors of the Township. A no vote will reject the Charter in its entirety and the Township will continue to be governed by the Pennsylvania Second Class Township Code. The Highland Township Home Rule Government Study Commission is pleased to present the Highland Home Rule Charter to you, the voters and concerned citizens of the Highland Township. There are many issues currently facing Highland Township right now. The following few slides are going to be some of the frequently asked questions that we've heard over the past several months. This is the only this is only to protect James City water. This is false. For Rob Bolware, manager and stakeholder relations for Seneca Resources Corporation, in his letter to Highland Township dated 1-10-2013, Seneca conducted a two-year study across our nearly 700,000 acres of owned and leased acreage in Pennsylvania to locate reservoirs with the appropriate conditions for injection. It is important to note that although this is the first well that Seneca is permitting for water injection, we anticipate permitting various injection wells across our acreage to handle produced waters in those areas, minimizing truck traffic on public roads. Will the injection well affect my water? Who knows? Pennsylvania regulators say they spend little time reviewing Marcellus Shale drilling permits. Pennsylvania environmental regulators say they spend as little as 35 minutes reviewing each of the thousands of applications for natural, natural well permits they get from drillers intent on tapping the state's lucrative and vast Marcel Shales res reserves. Staffers don't consider whether proposed wells comply with municipal or regional zoning and planning laws. <coughs> Will the home rule raise my taxes? No. No new taxes will be levied or raised by this charter. Highland Home Rule Charter, Article 1, Section 107 states, All residents of Highland Township possess the right to be fairly and equally taxed. That shall include, but not be limited to, the right to be assessed taxes which do not exceed the rates previously established by the township for the township by the local tax enabling act and the second class township code. What is a commissioner? A volunteer, neighbor, a resident or a community of your community that has a keen focus on keeping an open mind, being willing to compromise and getting feedback on ideas from individuals experienced in local government operations. Per the Home Rural in Pennsylvania Handbook, published by the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development, a study of the Home Rural experience found study commissioners tended to be long-term residents of their community, communities, although they represented a wide range of occupations, most were above average levels from their community in educational attainment and occupation status. Members were heavily involved in civic organizations, and one-third held some appointment or election position or elected position in local government. What happens to the Government Study Commission after the November 8, 2016 vote? The Commission is discharged. The Commission is discharged after the referendum. Before it's discharged, the Commission should prepare a final financial report for the Township. All records, tapes, reports, minutes, or other written documents must be turned over to the Township Secretary. All right, at this time we'd like to open a meeting uh, to public comment. Why? I should have thought that was through. 
hang on a second. What, what is your main reason for bringing in the homeless charter? What do you look at? Which, what's your main focus individually? Let me start with Bill. Um, Bill Edinger, my main reason is, is to give the road, uh, rights back to the people of Highland Township. There's a lot of difference between Highland, Russell City, and James City, even though that it's one township. People out there in Highland don't think that. There's a lot of controversies against Highland, Russell City, and James City. We're trying to make it all one group instead of this, 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 Can and this. Can you give me an example? Like, uh, there was a couple questions that was really brought up to us by a couple of people from Highland when we had our meeting out there is they wanted to go district. Why should our taxes be raised up there if something happens to James City Water? Their taxes is not going to be raised, just like ours. That's what we have in here, fairly taxed. Because they're complaining that they're paying for, like, uh, the roads out there. They're saying that they, their roads need plowed more. James City's it comes first. Um, my, I'm Misty. I'm here from James City. My, my biggest focus on the home road charter was one, personal education. I kind of wanted to learn what it was about, what it could do for Highland Township, that kind of stuff. Um, my second thing is, is like for an example, in the recent. Um, vacancy in the township supervisors two of our supervisors couldn't decide and that decision did not come back to the highland township residents that went back to a judge in out county whether he made a good decision whether he made a not so good decision that's still yet to be determined however it was not our decision and i didn't like that gotcha. Hi, i'm john gers um, i live here in james city uh, basically uh, people will have a bill of rights that they don't currently have uh, underneath the uh, second class township uh, that will protect us as well as people ha uh, will have a voice in the development and the governance of the community uh, and it's focused based on the rights to initiative. That's what I have. And that's the reason Yeah. But, okay. Oh, initially it was just to <coughs> learn about the government. Gotcha. That's why I, I mean, that's why I learned out of it. Yeah, yeah, I don't want I don't want verbatim again what we already read. You know, I want, oh, right. I want your opinion. Okay. Yeah. I'm Lloyd Hewlings. I'm also from James City. The reason why I got on the Government Study Commission was to learn to see what was there, what could help and what couldn't help. And I strongly believe that it would be better for all citizens of Highland Township. Kind of drop the Mason-Dixon line a little bit, you know, even begin neighbor to neighbor, you know. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Amy Beers. I'm from Russell City. Um, I just kind of got on the study commission because I felt that you know the township could be bettered a little bit. Um, like Misty said, the the whole township supervisor vacancy last time did kind of bother me. I didn't feel like we should have all been adults and been able to come up with a you know supervisor ourselves for the for the um, vacancy and. You know, just to learn a little bit more how we could change things for the better. I'm Judy Orzetti. I'm from James City. And first thing I want to say is thanks to everybody in Highland for helping out for this, giving us ideas. And I also want to thank every single person sitting up here. Uh, I wasn't voted in. I was put in place because of Aaron got a job and would really like to have seen someone from Highland sit in my my stead. However, that didn't happen, so here I am. This is not the first time that I looked into home rule. The first time was in the 90s, and I thought it was very um, interesting how we can actually work our government. And now, going through this, learning from PSATs and CHAD, and seeing how being it put in place can actually help the townships after studying like Grant Township and um, yeah, Elk, um, Elk Township and seeing how they were actually run with the home rule. I was very impressed and I think this could help all of the citizens and also support the supervisors too. That's my opinion. My name is Matt Vaughn. I'm from James City. Um, the reason why I got involved in the Home Rule Study Commission is because 
mainly a lot of people have said to me that they're scared to come up to a township meeting because of all the fighting and everything that happens up here. And I thought by getting this in and getting people more of a say in what they can do in our township, that would ease and we'd kind of end the bickering in Highland Township. If we come up to a meeting up here, we should be able to be heard. We should all get along because we are all, all are one in this township. And that's the main reason why I got involved in this. Okay. Thanks, everybody. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> As I sit here and listen to you folks, uh, when I first heard about this, I was very concerned because I didn't quite understand it, still don't quite understand it. <clears throat> I, uh, I was here at the last meeting where they voted the ordinance out, which I think was wrong. I think that when you get <clears throat> any given group that's administrative uh, powers, and when you hand them a petition with the amount of names that was on it, <coughs> showing that the people wanted to continue, <clears throat> no notice was given. They just arbitrarily voted everything out. <clears throat> that's wrong. Secondly, we had to listen to a tirade by a man who said they're going to sue you for hundreds of thousands of dollars and everybody in the township is going to have to pay thousands on their taxes and everything. This is wrong. It's, it's absolutely out of hand. The National Fuel Seneca couldn't stand the nationwide news article that would bring about on a small township like this here. Thirdly, one of the quickest ways that I can see that would be uh, accessible to you folks is if you include everybody. Now you have one lady there from, I heard from Russell City, but everybody else here <coughs> is from the community, which is the largest part of Highland Township. And I've heard various conversations on this where they think that Highland Township should annex away from you folks because well, actually, the next James City away from Island Township. Well, either way. Yeah. Uh, however you want to look at it, get the troublemakers out of the way, John. we got to talk about that. Yeah. But whatever what I'm about. But what I'm saying is, uh, and what's scaring the people out there is they have no voice. They have no voice when they come in and talk to the people that are your supervisors. You cannot ask anything. Uh, the first thing out of their mouth is, we don't have no money. Immediately at the last meeting, they approached uh, their uh, secretary, and she found a way to make $4,000 instantly out of another fund. But when someone asks to have their roads repaired or something like this here, it never comes about because they don't have the money. But they can find funds to pay an attorney when they threw a free attorney out, which doesn't make sense. Nobody, it, it, I haven't found anybody can make any sense out of it yet. I haven't. I think it was wrong. I'm not, I don't think we can beat National Fuel. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't. But God help us, I think we ought to try. I think it's up to the folks here to try to garner some people out of the area. I, and I'm talking about Russell City a little bit better. And, Perhaps Island Township, where there's three or four people out there vote. You know, there's not too many voters out there. But <clears throat> I was here last week, and I went out, and I said, I'm glad that you got this out. But as I thought about it a little bit, I was wrong. I, I think that you folks have got <clears throat> the squirrel by the tail, and I think that you should perhaps move along because I, I, I think that you have a good idea here. I don't agree with everything I read in here so far, but the majority of it makes sense. I think you guys done a fella, real fine job. Couldn't ask for any better. I mean, none of us are, you know, so to speak, the people that normally write this thing, but it was done well. Got a man in here who can talk for me. 
He's the smoothest talker. I've been around. That's that gentleman over there in the suit. I think he has to talk a little bit here, a little bit. You know, I, he has more to say than I can say. But what I'm trying to say is, when we come in here to address the supervisors, we don't want to be put under the rug or shoved off to the side or told some stupid thing like we don't have any money when they got eight hundred thousand dollars in an account now. Something's wrong with us. And we need to have some accountability here, and this is a beginning. Now, my understanding is that when we <clears throat> have a petition, we bring it in hand to the supervisors. If we can get enough names on it to make it a petition, which you can out in Highland, but you can in town here, but you know, vice versa, if we work together, as mm -hmm. Matt says, that's, you got to work together. <clears throat> So far, when I attend these meetings, it's nothing but an outrage. You know, this guy's fighting this guy, and this guy's trying to say something about the water company, and another guy's calling him a liar. And, and last week when I was here and almost got thrown out, this gentleman was standing there, minding his own business, made a statement, and his neighbor gave him hell because he was burning in his own yard. We don't have zoning. What you do in your own property is your business. And it's coming down to where three people are going to tell us what to do. And, and I can go on all night, but I want to tell you one more thing. I came in here in the spring, and I said to our three supervisors, we have a many dilapidated buildings in the township. There are several out by me alone that are hazards to the people who are coming in to utilize the area, which where I live, it's the trails, the snowmobile club, and everything else. We have dilapidated buildings. You have dilapidated buildings in the community here. I said, can you do something about it? Because we already have taken care of one building out on Route 66. We have a precedent set up so that they can move right in and do something about it. Nothing's been done. It's, oh, ha, 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 we'll have our Abram take care of it. Well, Brahms in Schenectady, New York or someplace, because he sure as heck isn't into this community. <clears throat> it's unfair to us that we can't come in here and ask for something to be done and not at least looked into. I asked him to ride the roads. I said out Sackett, Origin or Ogden or however the heck you say that road out there is gone. It's gone. The previous supervisors, you never had this problem. This year, I can't even walk my dog up a McAdam Road because of the potholes, and they can't come up with enough money to fill a pothole. You go to any one of these dirt roads around here, you just don't drive down there road anymore. Your car goes like this here. I mean, it's just, it's terrible. Nothing's being done. <clears throat> I have nothing against our road master that we have, but he's the worst I've ever seen in my life, and I've been around a long time, 78 years. And I'll be damned if I ever see anybody build a road like that and take a grader down over asphalt and then put rocks on top of it see how fast you can get it out. And if you don't think I'm telling you the story, just drive out Sackett Road, four corners, anywhere out in there, whether it's a chunk of asphalt, the man has started to destroy it. And thirdly, we bought a damn two-wheel drive truck to plow snow. Now, that's the damnest thing I've ever heard of in my life in Highland Township. The roads are straight down, straight up. Now, what's a two-wheel drive truck? We've had two accidents in this township in the last two or three years. Wonder what the insurance is in this township right now for the township. It's you know. high. Huh? It's high. That would be an understatement. It, it has to be astronomical. And this kind of thing we're trying to stop. You know, I mean. And, and I think that you, you, you're on to something here. And I'm going to do my best to convince my people out at uh, Highland to vote for you. But you haven't done enough out there because people are scared of you because they think it's... They think the only thing you're trying to do is stop this well in here. And I know it's not. I know it's not. But you have the people convinced who don't know what you're talking about and are afraid to come in. People are afraid to attend these places in here because it's a war in here usually. Now it's very nice and calm in here tonight. Uh, 
God bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks. Thank you. Diane Hester. Um, I think the Highland Township is unique in that we're all here to recreate. We're simple people. We're here to vacation. It's always been a nice, enjoyable place to visit and live. And I don't think the people here ask for much. I think they just want everything maintained and to enjoy their nice, quiet life. And we've always had that. But lately, our township has gotten a reputation of being rowdy, um, hard to deal with. Uh, our supervisors are you know, appointed because of all these problems. And we need to change that perception. We need to take the fear out. The fear of these big companies that sees us as somebody to railroad. And I think by having a home rule committee like you, and whoever else gets involved shows everybody that as a township we're functioning and that we're clear-headed and we can lead and we can get rid of the fear because we're being proactive. We're addressing the issues. We're doing something about them. We've got a plan in place and everybody can relax and just function as a community. So I wanted to give you a lot of kudos for that and I'm really rooting for you, and I hope that this all works because we need it. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> really, Mrs. Bester, the way you should say that is instead of rooting for us, we're rooting for all of us. Because that's what we're doing this for, is for that's all of us yeah. in Highland nice Township. It's to see it in the hands of the citizens and not yeah. a government that's just going to get rid of. Any ordinance I want to get rid of because it, it suits them, not us. Thank you. Honey. That Thank you. to me is yielding a hammer and causing a lot of fear, and we can't have that in a small community like this. It has to be done right. I want to add a little bit to what this young lady just said, and thank you very much because you're very right. I live out where there's probably, Four Corners probably has 125 to 150 camps. Where I live, it's, there's four of us on that road, maybe five, and the rest are camps. These people pay a lot of money, but they have no voice. Exactly. And that's something that perhaps you as a group, before you finish this little piece of paper, might want to put in a little bit of concern for the people that are from Ohio and Pittsburgh and out there. But they spend the summers here and or the winters, depending on the snowmobile club or what have you. And they drop a lot of money in our area. And it's, uh, they're mostly very conscientious people, I thought. And, uh, by the way, I buy and sell property, and I sell a lot of property to these people, and I haven't found too many <coughs> that are out of hand. They have no voice, and that might be a consideration that you guys might want to think about a little bit, just a little bit. And secondly, in thinking about things just right now, and I'm sometimes a little dirty-minded, but, you know, you can post those roads out there to a limit of, say, five tons. Nobody's going to be able to go in and out to Owl's Nest and do their wells. <coughs> it would be an impasse. They, they can't do it. I'm not, I'm just saying, you know, if they want to play a little dirty, the township can play a little dirty. I, I'm not saying you should, because they're one of the biggest, you know, providers of workers here in the area and, and everything, but there's always a way to accomplish something that is not too rough, but easily done. Excuse me, you know what turned me about Marcella Shell? I was going out to Alice and I see that podium out there with the names and stuff, because I used to live out there. Marcella Shell guy followed us all over the place like we were out there trying to rip them off. But wanted to know what our business was. You know, well, they, stuff like that. They, they, 
flying in and out in helicopters and everything. They definitely got more money than we got. But we can stop them. There's ways, you know. Take the bridge out down there at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> Marsha. I wanted to add to John's thing, how he was saying the people with camps and everything, they do not have a voice. Um, the petitions that I went around and got, there were a lot of people from camps and families that part-time summer or winter. And they did have a voice, but it wasn't recognized when I turned in the petition because they didn't live here and they weren't voters here. So I understand where he's coming from. I, I agree with you on that one. I would rather see our meetings address issues like, what can we do for the tourist, for the people who come here to recreate, to make it more um, attractive to them, and let them see what a nice community, what a nice township we have. It'll attract more people, it'll bring in more revenues, it'll raise property values. What is happening now is there's a bunch of fear and, and things that is lowering property values. I mean, who wants to buy something they don't know if they're going to have water in two years? I mean, we heard, we heard. I mean, we need to totally turn around the whole approach to our township. And so I'd like to see more, like, committees or maybe different things that we can do that wouldn't cost much but that could bring a sense of community and a sense of come here because, I mean, we have a snowmobile club. They close the roads in the winter. Who has that? Yeah. You know, if you put that out on Facebook and you did some things that would hardly take any money at all, we don't have any committees in our township that's doing the positive things. We're focusing too much on negative things and problems. All we hear at the township meetings is problems. We don't hear anything about anything nice. Once in a while, um, Marsha hears doing all these recreational things. And that's like about the only positive things that I've heard. So, and with this home rule, I would like to see more of, for us, the citizens, all of us. And it's been totally neglected. And we have a very special area. We have a lot here we can promote. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could have people coming in here. You wouldn't be able to hold them all. And that's what I want to see happening. That's my interest in this more than anything. I've suffered from this Marcellus stuff, too. And I'm just eating it, okay? Mm -hmm. A lot of people are eating it. But we can't focus all our attention on that. We need to focus on the positive and turn this around. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. My main <coughs> thing is I don't want to see an injection well going here and ruining our water. I don't want to see it going to four corners and ruining their water. They're definitely on well water out there. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to see it go anyplace else. And not only is it going to be the wells from around here, they're going to truck it in from Ohio and every place else. And it's going to be the worst of the worst that they're going to inject in the ground. Sooner or later, it's going to hit something, some water veins. And I don't want to see it. And I hope you can do something about it. I have one more thing I forgot to bring up. Okay. If we're going to be forced with this down our throats, as far as what we have to deal with here, with the wells and all that stuff, can't we think of, of, of maybe a different approach, a positive approach? Like, well, we've got a business here, and they're using our water, and they're going to be dumping stuff in our community, like a water sewage system company or something. Well, can't we turn that around, and can we create a tax? Can we make it so that it's an income for our township? Can we explore things like this as a possibility? That's the only problem. Well, that would be that would be really good. That's really good food for thought for future consideration. Because right now we're trying to draft just like a simple charter so we can get enacted. That's the power about this. If people have something and they believe in it, that will give the people the power to look into it and be able to do more. Exactly. That's what we need to be doing. Oh, you had a question? I did. I guess just a question and a comment. 
I agree with a lot of what John said, and you, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your first name. Diane. Diane. I, you have a camp here, or do you live here? I have a farm, I live here. You live here, okay. Um, first of all, kudos to you guys. I know you've done a lot of work, and it takes, and I, I know that one very well, so I know she's got a lot of determination, so kudos to you guys. I know it was a lot of hard work to do. Um, my question is, you intend, I guess if you are adapted and this, the charter goes through in November, I assume that your first business transaction will be to bring in this ordinance back in? We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Yeah, we're done. What do you mean you're done? This goes, we, we dissolve. We dissolve. We dissolve huh? Yeah. But is that, I didn't read, I, we don't have any papers. We well, any basically, papers. once you vote on the, once you vote on a charter, it'll be listed on the charter. So all of us are voting whether we're going to bring that ordinance back into effect or not. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is it in there that you're bringing up, that you want it back in? <clears throat> there is a, yeah, is it yeah. in the charter? There is a community bill of rights in the charter, and we have copies of it here. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I guess, thank you. Yeah, that's we, that's yeah, trying yeah, to say. Yeah. There is a community I bill of rights. Explain to her how it works when somebody wants to bring something back or bring something up. It has to be. Well, actually, probably the best, Chad. Chad, would you like to explain how the referendum process works? <coughs> Is that okay, board? I think. Yeah, that's fine. Could you please explain that for us? Yeah. So, if a charter is enacted in November or uh, any other time in the future, the charter can be amended by a vote of the people of the township. And so to initiate an amendment of that charter, if you want to change that charter once it gets put into place, you need to gather signatures on a petition. So a petition would be circulated. You have to gather uh, signatures equal to 10% of the people that voted at the last gubernatorial election, a uh, relatively small number in a township like Highland. Um, and then if you get that number of signatures, then it would go up for a vote of the people at the next election. So say the a charter goes into effect in November of this year, November 8th is the election day. If somebody is unhappy with it or if somebody wants to add something to it in the future, they can circulate a petition within the community, gather signatures on that petition. If they get enough signatures, then that goes to the Board of Elections and then the people of the township will be able to vote on that again at the next general election to decide if they want to change the charter or not. So this is not a static document once it gets put into place. The second class township code, as folks have been talking about tonight, was written mostly in 1933 by people in Harrisburg, and that is a static document. You don't have flexibility in there. The, char or the second class township code tells you what you can or cannot do, and if it's not in there, it's assumed you cannot do it. Home rule is very different. It's assumed that you can do anything under the charter unless it's specifically prohibited by the state, and it also gives all the people of the community much more flexibility in changing that because they can go around the governing body if they need to and put things up for a vote of the people. So it's the people working in con concert with the governing body. It's not just the supervisors, it's the supervisors and the people. And the people have the authority to change and to amend that charter if they would like. Is that clear? Well, yes, thank you. What's sad is none of us want this damn injection well. None of us want it. I mean, who in their right mind wants this freaking thing in our backyard? But it's how we fight it. We're not going to beat Seneca. Yeah. We're not yeah. going to beat National Fuels. No. I mean, it's, it's, it's a given. We Are we going to have bad water? We don't know that. None of us know that. We're taking the we're taking the worst case scenario, which sometimes you have to take in consideration. But everybody's just assuming we're going to have bad water. We don't know that. But the lesser of the evils is then this. I I, I'm, I know I'm being a dead horse, but the lesser of two evils is on this side. You, your taxes go up, you can't afford your property taxes, we pay the legal fees for Seneca, if we continue to fight that, we pay their legal fees, our legal fees, their damages, our taxes go up, our property taxes go up, we lose our homes, and or have bad water, or we have the possibility of bad water. So I, it's a catch-22, but none of us want this thing, <coughs> but we have to decide if we truly can beat it or not. Sell that. If I'm not mistaken, and I could be wrong, because I, I don't believe everything I hear, and I'm trying to read up on everything and try to believe some of what I read, because I can't believe everything I read. <laughs> Hence, Mike does not work for Seneca. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll take care of it. With all this, I just don't, it's just, it's, I don't want people thinking that. I'll take care but of it. But I'm glad he rescinded his vote, so that helped, you know. Sure. So, but uh, that's just an example. I'm sorry, but that's just that's an fine. example that everything you read cannot be taken for, for true. But, um, 
I lost the train of thought. I was going to say something. Shit. Oh, well, that's, that's fine. But it's just sad because none of us want that. And I've lived in this community since I was five years old. And our families were, this was a close, beautiful, tight-knit community. I remember the community center. You know, we had all the events. Everybody, anybody who has been here this long knows that. You know, my parents are just rolling in their graves right now. I guarantee it. And it shouldn't be this way. None of us want it. But we have to fight it the right way, and we have to fight it legally, Seldeff legally and that's the problem the ordinance is illegal I want to know something now maybe I'm wrong but this is what I want to know the meeting that cash and uh, the authority were supposed to have in August with the judge did we not sit and listen to this lawyer say that she was going to rescind this that she would have nothing to do with it and she would throw it out Yet, two days later, we went, we seen in the paper where Grant Township was allowed to have that intervene, where they changed, went your thing down. Am I mistaken, or what am I trying to say? Am I right? Yeah. Natalie, you want to take it? Um, which, 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 <laughs> that question and the legality. Okay, well, maybe I'll go ahead and talk about the, the first question and just take them in order. Um, hi, my name's Natalie Long. I'm an attorney with the Community Environmental... Sally Peterson. Sorry? Sally Peterson. Good to meet you, Ms. Peterson. Um, <coughs> I'm an attorney with the Community Environmental Legal Defense Fund. Uh, and your comment as to the legality of the ordinance, there are a couple of different things that I think it's worth pointing out just from the attorney's perspective. Um, first, we no one actually adjudicated the legality of the ordinance. The ordinance wasn't actually, there wasn't a decision actually reached on it. So we don't know what the court would have said or what the judge would have said. So we can only speculate. Um, so that's, it's actually a misnomer to call it illegal because we, we don't know. Um, no one ever had a chance to actually make a decision on that. The second sort of thing that I think uh, from, from a basis in the law uh, that really needs to be considered uh, is the question of what people's rights are uh, and what people are actually willing to do in order to be able to, to defend those rights and how, how deep a belief goes as to whether or not a people and a community actually have that right or not. And that's something um, that is that goes more to the heart of what the law actually is and how the law actually works with people or for people or against people. Uh, if there is a fundamental right for people to actually govern themselves, which is the basis for our entire system of government, if we actually believe that we have that right, then that's something that we have to actually exercise and we have to drive it into law, otherwise it is taken from us. Uh, and that's what a Bill of Rights in this sense actually does for people. It allows them the vehicle to exercise a right that perhaps we always had uh, and maybe we forgot and it languished and it was taken from us. Correct. Or right. perhaps perhaps it's something that we never even got a chance to really exercise we you know who knows right that I understand yeah um, and so this is something that when we're talking about litigating and arguing for a right to local self-government it's not only a legal question it's also a political question and and a, a moral one for people whether or not they actually believe they have the right to to govern the place where they live as opposed to being governed uh, by a, a decision made by a board of directors who knows how far away uh, so, so this is something that I think goes uh, much deeper than perhaps uh, your initial comment might, might suggest. I hope maybe I've been able to shed some light on that. A little. I understand exactly what you're saying and agree as far as the Bill of Rights. Um, you know, I want a million dollars. I'm not going to get it. You know, I, if you worked hard and fought for it, you might. Uh, it's a little harder than that, but you know, I'm, I'm working on it, but it doesn't come quite that way. But I think you know what I'm saying. You know, we, all, we all want a certain thing. It doesn't mean we're going to get it. We could strive to get it. Um, it just is Let me ask you this. Sure. How many of these injection well, is it just grant that you have fought for? Uh, no, we've worked with communities all across the country. Okay, how many have you won? Um, define when. There are so many ways to define that. I mean, stopping the project. We've stopped projects sure. with communities, or the communities themselves have stopped projects. Um, the question as to the right of local self-government is one that needs to be litigated. Something just the same as we have going on here this injection well? Um, I'm sorry, the lawyer in me is parsing that question. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah but it's, I mean, it's, if it's been challenged, it hasn't been challenged, um, same, same situation. Um, there's the case in Grant Township. <coughs> Correct. Is that the only one? Um, 
Township. Yes. Township. Yeah, the case in Grant Township for injection wells in Pennsylvania is the only other one we've got going. That ordinance litigation is actually still currently ongoing, That's what as I've well heard. as they have a home rule charter in place now, which mm -hmm. also prohibits the injection well as a violation of the rights of Grant Township. And that ordinance is in place and has not been challenged. And that it's is also PSPG, worth it's also correct? worth noting that yeah. the ordinance and the charters are different legal tools. The ordinance is uh, a tool that supervisors can exercise under the second class township code. Yes. The home rule charter is constitutionally derived, and the courts generally see home rule charters as taking on the force of state statutory law. Right. So. If we do a quick structure, you think of the Pennsylvania Constitution, state statutes in Harrisburg, then you have the second class township the code. Yep, and for folks that weren't here, I'm going to explain okay. it. The second class township code, and then ordinances underneath that. If you're home rule, you have the Pennsylvania Constitution, which gives communities the authority to adopt home rule charters, and that home rule charter then takes on the force of state statutory law. So the question of injection wells under home rule charters has not been litigated or tried. And so, in the, you know, there really would be a conflict between the two laws at that point if there was going to be a conflict if Seneca did try to overturn the charter. But there is conflict now with Grant. Uh, not over the charter. There was conflict over the ordinance, yes. Correct. Okay. And how is that going right now? Uh, it's in a waiting period. The judge has set a conference call date for 2017. 2017. I've and given us another year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what are the, has Grant had to pay any monies out? Any yeah. fees? Any? Nope. Nothing yet. They pay our travel and mileage. In the oh, same. not to you. No, I meant to this litigation and ongoing. Nothing yet. You're asking Nothing. if they've been fined. Right. Yeah. Fees, anything, yeah. Could you repeat your question? As well? because I, I forgot what I even said. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I said was, had the supervisors waited a month and let uh, cash and the rest of them, we'd be in the same boat as Grant Township, and we could have waited later until 217. But they jumped in and rescinded the thing. They didn't. Wait, they didn't even wait or even ask anybody. They took it upon themselves to do it. They didn't care about any petition, any um, anything that the home rule, anything. They just went ahead and did it. Um, it's hard for me to speculate about what the future might have been. Um, yeah, right. I'm just see. I'm thinking <laughs> Grant got it. Maybe we'd have had it till 217. You don't know. Do you try? No. And if we had to 217, maybe we'd have had more time to get some more eggs in the crate to fight with, you know? Right, and I, I do know that there was uh, a motion that uh, I believe Cash and the, the Water Authority had been working on it to right. intervene, so who knows to intervene, how that right. might have, that right. might have They come. wanted to intervene, and, and they knew it. The supervisors knew it, but yet they cared less about it. Um, yeah, I, I can't speculate as to um, as to anything in, in terms of what the intentions were for repealing the ordinance. No, but, you can't. You can't. Um, but but I can say that the motion for intervention was pending, um, and of course, more time when you're developing a case is always useful. Thank you. That was my tirade to last. I, I have a question for Miss Long. Yes. Um, when after uh, Grant Township, uh, actually the judge ruled against their ordinance last fall, then they filed for home rule in November last year. Um, this, I believe, it was January fifteenth of this year. PGE filed for sanctions against Grant Township and Seldup. What could that entail? What would that could that entail to Grant Township? What what could happen there with the sanctions? You know, what what all does that? Yeah. Um, I'm pausing because I'm just thinking about what sort of privileges and confidentiality I need to respect for uh, for Grant as one of our clients. Um, well, well, let's say that happened here because what we were told at the last township meeting, they had the supervisors had four or five different legal opinions, saying that parts of our ordinance was unconstitutional, as was found by the same judge who was found. We had the same judge that Grant Township had. The same sections that they found unconstitutional in Grant Townships was verbatim in our. Parts of it were verbatim in ours, so that we were pretty much pretty sure having five different legal opinions that we were probably headed down the same road if we maintained that community bill of rights ordinance as it was written. Um, but I, I, I just would like to know. So since we were headed there, now we do this. Now it looks like we're falling into the same thing as Grant Township. Now we go to Home Rule. Now all of a sudden, maybe Seneca files for sanctions against the township. 
and it, let's say let's say they want monetary damages from the township. I know they say they want to put in a thing maintaining equal taxes and you know reasonable taxes. But if this goes in front of a federal judge, the judge can come in and, and levy a special tax on all the taxpayers. And now, now we could end up paying four grand a year just for the tax. If we get a multi-million dollar settlement a judgment against us, how you know what do we do? Now, I, I have a question. Now that would be on that. A judge would have to restate the second task clownship toad because I think you can only raise it five mils a year. Not on a special tax. But the judge, they would actually have to come in and change the statute and make Highland Township a special exemption to raise that tax. Um, I heard Chad behind me, so I'll let Chad jump in first. <laughs> yeah, uh, a couple of quick things. Uh, the judge did not find that the ordinance was unconstitutional, so that needs to be corrected. The judge stripped out certain provisions of the ordinance, claiming that the township as a second class township lacked the authority as a second class township to enact that ordinance. So that's different under Home Rule. Uh, she did not make any decisions on the constitutionality of the ordinance. So just to make sure that's clear. The other thing, the sanctions stuff, um, and it's public, it's on the docket. The sanctions was not against the township. Uh, PGE's attorneys filed for sanctions against the Community Environmental Legal Defense Fund and our council. So it wasn't anything to do with the township. The sanctions were filed against us. We also filed counter sanctions against them just after that. Those have been stayed by the judge at this point, and so they're currently on us. What, what could sanctions entail, though? I mean, you know... Sanctions, if the judge wanted to take them up either against us or against uh, or, PGE's attorneys, that's right. financial consequences, but that's on us. It's got nothing to do with the township. It's strictly financial. That's why I didn't know what all that could entail. Is there, is that, it seemed pretty broad when I looked up what sanctions would be, so I wasn't sure what that... What the, the sure. Yeah, that was against us as an organization and our attorneys. The original motion didn't mention Grant. I thought it. Well, I had read it before, you know, when it first came out at the beginning of the year, and I thought it had mentioned Grant Township as well in nope. the original motion. Not for sanctions. Okay. Did you have anything on uh, the taxes or bankruptcy? Um, I think. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I was following a different train of thought. I think. Yeah. To maybe parse out the distinction, I think that uh, Chad is making there. Uh, and maybe perhaps the distinction that you're making as well uh, is uh, the difference between sanctions uh, and damages. And I think your question is actually revolving around the question of damages, which happens after litigation is actually finished. Um, and there's uh, damages is something that can also be litigated. So there's no guarantee uh, that uh, the plaintiff um, might actually seek damages. Uh, if they, you know, for who knows whatever reason, um, a plaintiff might not seek damages because it would look bad for publicity. Um, it, maybe they, what they just want to, they just want to prove a point, and they want declar uh, declaratory relief, and actually just get rid of something and have the judge uh, put an injunction. It depends on what kind of relief it is uh, that a plaintiff might actually ask for. And so there's no guarantee that in any particular circumstance, damages might actually happen. Um, and I think what you're laying out there, of course, is uh, the worst case scenario. Um, you know, which is where I think it's easy for a person's mind to go to uh, in terms of thinking of uh, what, what the worst sort of thing is. Um, and I, I try to resist the urge to go to that place because uh, nine times out of ten it, it doesn't get to be that bad. That said, uh, in the one out of ten instance, uh, if it actually does, I think it goes back to perhaps the question that, that I raised earlier, which is the question of civil liberties and of basic fundamental rights. Uh, and it's one that I think, um, for me anyway, as an attorney, I keep going back to because for me the law is very much about uh, what does justice look like in a situation uh, and what does, uh, what does the right outcome look like for the well-being of people as opposed to the outcome that we think is possible or feasible under a particular circumstance. Um, I think it's very important when you're advocating uh, for a client's rights that you think of where, wh what position should they be in versus what's the position um, that they're willing to settle for, because if you, if you start there, you're never actually going to get anywhere. Um, so in terms of thinking about the damages question, if you envision the worst case scenario, I think it comes down to the question of how much are people willing to fight for the things that they want to protect and love. Not on. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I have a question um, about attorneys. Are they all are they all the same? Do they learn the same law, or is there like a constitutional law, mosaic law, different laws, you know, tax laws, or, or you know, like like they they talk to five different attorneys. 
Are they all the same or? No, <laughs> no, they're not. Um, different attorneys often specialize in different things. There are also general practitioners uh, who do general sorts of work, um, you know, sort of uh, community-based lawyering, things like that. Uh, and there are also attorneys um, that work uh, uh, that work for for justice-related issues. I think you can you could say that there's um, a a line of attorneys who are very concerned about questions of justice uh, as regards to community and individuals and, and human rights and civil rights. So those tend to be the civil rights attorneys, uh, the constitutional law attorneys, uh, things like that. Natalie, if if cash or the Highland Township Municipal Authority would have got granted intervener status, they would have took over the ward on the fight on our problem with Seneca. Or they would have had equal footing, even if the township decided to bail out of it. Uh, yes, if a party is granted intervention into uh, into uh, a lawsuit, that means that they have equal weight or equal voice in the proceedings, mm -hmm. uh, and means that they're able to file motions, they're able to file briefs and things like that. Even if the Highland Township would have bailed out of that. Yes. And to me, that's what the sad part and why we're up here trying to talk about this is. If we would have waited, we would have had a non-profit taking on the fight in a municipal water authority that barely has nothing. We wouldn't even have our township being sued. It, it, well, it might, um, the action might have stayed against the township. Uh, it depends on, it, it depends, it depends on, on the litigation, how you're doing it. But it's always better to have people talk. And that's part of home rule why we're trying to do this. You have more people involved, more people doing things together. So we are one community and we all know what's going on together. Thank you. I have one other thing. Just to let people know, we are not getting rid of the second township code. This, the Home Rule Charter, we just took it and just tweaked some stuff that's in it. The township is still going to be going by the township co book on all their business. We just took certain sections and tweaked them a little bit to fit Highland Township needs. Any other questions? John. <laughs> Thank that gentleman because he straightened out a lot of things that most of us were worried about. That, uh, that was a very good question. I couldn't, I couldn't even come close to what he just These two people, I think, clarified a lot of things that needed clarified, except for one thing. <coughs> I've been here now for almost 45 minutes. And the only thing that was talked about was some Marcellus Wells. That's exactly what I'm trying to tell you, folks. You've got to include the rest of the township. They're not out in Highland. That well yeah. would never bother them. Not yet. Well, listen, yeah, um, right. John, I have something for you. Yeah, they're I'm coming. I'm going to with you, but it's there. Now, they've gone and put in another 30 wells out at Owl's Nest. 30 wells. Now, think about that. <laughs> And why in the world couldn't they put a, a well out there that uh, would take the water? I think they're trying to get a permit to take one out now. Well, yeah, yeah th this is only going to be why couldn't this is only be the first one, and then there's going to be very. Uh, I, I was just wondering, did you did, did were you here for the presentation when we showed about the vacancies and how we're changing that and those other things? The whole meeting hasn't been about the injection well. I was, I was just here making for sure the you were here. Meeting, but the last forty-five minutes, ma'am, has been. Well, that, them are the questions, questions that were brought that up. Seems to be the questions of the see, meeting. This is what I'm trying to tell you. The people from out of your area come in here, and that's what they hear. Why they not? don't want to hear. Well, they have a the whole time. I understand what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. And that's well, why I'm saying. John, it, this is only going to be the first one, and there's going to be a lot more to come. Uh, a geologist in PA wrote, in, uh, and I have the uh, PowerPoint at home, but it says that. Uh, to cover Pennsylvania's need for injection wells, they would need at least 27 to 32 by the year 2017. Now, one nice thing is that we found that misinformation is being played a lot here. Like in the newspaper uh, on the day of August 10th, it stated that there's 100 uh, class two wells in Highland in 700 in all county. And it was also mentioned here at that meeting uh, by one of the supervisors. But the fact is, is there's only one 
Uh, mm -hmm. there, there's none right now because it, those are different class two injection wells. Those are uh, not class two D injection wells. There's only six NPA right now. Yeah. And like I said, once they get the one in, you know, they're going to get more in. And PA is pushing to get at least 27 to 32 injection wells in by 2017. They were, I mean, that was just so you don't have to pay to get it taken somewhere else because now the DEP doesn't allow them to put them into the river, the waste. They don't allow them to put it into sanitary uh, sewer systems or dumps. If it's so safe, yes. it wouldn't allow it. I want to say one more thing. Now shut up, I promise. <laughs> a camp in Highland Township right now with just a water well and an outhouse are selling more than most property in James City. They're higher. Two bedroom camp, camp and a half, with just a water well, are bringing anywhere from 25 to 50 grand with an outhouse. Now think about that a little bit. Now think about this. Say the next proposed well was right next to that camp. That camp. The guy would jump for it joy. will go from what fifty thousand to zero. <laughs> yeah. It would jump for joy. Right. Certainly. And it's it's uh, I'm just trying to tell you that the property values are escalating in our township because the people, like this lady said there, are moving into this area and they want a camp here. They want Camp. They did have a place to pitch a tent down in Boston City, but they took that out because of the pipeline. So you know, there's there's a lot of influx of people coming in. There's a lot of money floating around here, and and uh, what I'm trying to say to you is, <clears throat> let's get this meeting going because I think you're going to make. I don't, I don't see how you can mm -hmm. lose. I think we need you definitely. It's not these people, it's us. Well, it's these people who put it together. Well, that's what home rules for. The second five cents. Yeah, you can actually you can go. Get those in town. No, the best place to go down to Gobbler's office. They'll give them to you. Yeah, that. So you need a copy? Yeah. Well, a second class township, but I told Mr. Farnsworth, best place you can go down to Matt Gobbler's right. office. That, that's the best way to get it. <laughs> I think I handed all the ones I yeah, had Yeah, we had some extra copies, right. and they're already gone. Okay. When will we see the whole uh, lineup of what you guys have done? Um, we have a draft charter available this evening. To, and, of course, nothing is final until the commission has decided on making it final, making it available for submission, that kind of stuff, but we do have a draft available. Is that for what that paper submission. number is? No, not those ones. I'm not real positive where they went, <laughs> but I had 15 copies of it this evening, and I, if we can't find them, Lloyd, if we can't find them, <laughs> I'll make sure that you get a copy just as soon as I can, okay? Tomorrow's then what's tomorrow yeah. going to bring, what uh, Misty? What, what are you doing tomorrow? Tomorrow we're having our final meeting. Well, we're having a meeting that could be our final meeting. Not necessarily is our final meeting, but could be our final meeting. <coughs> we decide then whether we um, want to make things these that we have so far final. And if we are, then we'll submit it. If we decide that more information is needed in the draft <coughs> charter that we have, then we'll continue. And we have up to nine months to do that. So you're going to kind of read over these tomorrow, and <coughs> I think we've all ha we all have no. a copy of it. We've all read it. Um, all we're going to do mostly tomorrow is um, discussion. If any discussion is needed, that kind of stuff. I think it's a good time to encourage. I think we had a good public comment. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's I, done. I just have one little thing I'd like to. I prepared Go ahead. and I'd like to read it. Mm -hmm. Um, I have something, and this is a personal opinion. This in no way reflects on the Home Rule Charter Committee. Again, this is just my personal thing. This is, we, are the, we the people are having a big wake-up call here in Highland Township. Our rights given in the Pennsylvania Constitution recognizes that all power is inherent in the people and all free governments are founded in their authority and instituted for their peace, safety, and happiness. Article 1-27 says the people have a right to clean air, 
pure water and to the preservation of natural scenic, historic, and aesthetic values in the environment. That's right in our Pennsylvania Constitution. <coughs> However, our rights seem to be getting stripped away. Apparently, some think that corporations have rights over us as humanity. Those of us that watch TV, listen to the radio, read the newspaper, and get information from the internet should realize that our government is our environment is in very grave danger. <coughs> yes, I know that we need oil, gas, and other energy resources. However, we need people and corporations to look at the bigger picture, not the short-term gains. They should be responsive and accountable for their actions, not just slapped with a fine, which, in the end, we pay for anyway. The news is full of tragedies, such as drought, flood, earthquakes, air pollution, and water pollution, which has caused damage to our environment, including these type 2 injection wells that they'd like to put in here. <clears throat> this injection well is used to push, most injection wells are used to push brine water in to extract fossil fuel out of another well. The type of injection well that Seneca is proposing in here is one that is used to dump toxic waste, completely different types of wells, including brine water and other chemicals that are harmful for humanity. This is all under pressure. This injection well will be placed approximately a half a mile from the water source of James City. As another citizen pointed out not so long ago at the regular meeting of Highland Township Supervisors, it's not the actual injection well that we should be all that should be taking all of our attention. <clears throat> it's the unplugged wells, the orphan wells, or the wells that have been plugged many years ago by methods that are no longer considered safe. They have the greatest potential for immediate failure. These wells are hidden all over our wooded areas in Highland Township, Jones Township, Wetmore Township, Kane, and clean across the state. These are in the same woods that most of us have grown up in, played in as children, have vacationed in. These are the woods that we have inherited from our parents and will pass on to our children. Don't leave it up to our children to clean up and pay for the mess that we have allowed to be created in our own backyard. Fracking fluid or brine water is a toxic brew that consists of multiple chemicals. Industry can pick from a menu of up to 600 different kinds. Typically, 5 to 10 chemicals are used in a single frack job, but a well can be fracked multiple times, and each gas plate consists of tens to hundreds of thousands of wells, driving up the number of chemicals ultimately used. Many fracking chemicals are protected from disclosure under trade secret exemptions. Studies of fraction, fracking waste have identified formaldehyde, acidic acids, boric acids, among hundreds of other chemicals. For each frack, 80 to 30 tons, 300 tons, excuse me, of chemicals may be used. They're all selected from a menu of, again, up to 600 different chemicals. Though the composition of most fracking chemicals remains protected from disclosure for, through various trade secret exemptions under the state and federal law, Scientists have analyzed fracking fluid and have identified volatile organic compounds called VOCs. These are benzene, toluene, xylene, and things I can't even pronounce, all of which are significant dangers to human health and welfare. The industry says it's, it's misleading to suggest that 600 plus chemicals are used in fracking operations since only a small percentage of this number is actually used per well. But this one well model is the biggest myth, misrepre misrepresentation of all. Fracking operations in a gas play typically consist of many thousands of wells. Cumulative impacts are what matter. No technology currently exists to make wells safe. Here are some of the numbers from reports released by drilling giants. Slumberger, Archer, Oil and Gas, Southwest Energy, and the Society of Petroleum Engineers. Around 5% of oil and ga gas weeks leak immediately, and up to six of them will fail over a 60% of them will fail over a 30 year time period. More than half of them will fail within 30 years. 35% of all oil and gas wells are currently leaking tonight, right now. These industry reports similar <coughs> findings from the state in agencies like Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection and the Colorado Oil and Gas Convention Conservation Commission. Some recent modifications to cementing regulations misguidedly include requirements on cement strength, but this is not a question of stronger cement or better technology. The industry's own documents say the strength is not a major issue in oil well cementing under many circumstances. Cement clearly cannot resist the sheer force. That is the most common reason for oil well distortion and rupture during active production. 
In other words, the high stresses and rock movements deep underground will cause a significant portion of wells to fail, no matter what they do. <clears throat> it's not just about the water. It's also about the farm animals that live by the crops growing in our soil, such as that's out in Jones Township. People are concerned about their lands, their animals, and their family, and they should be. Studies have shown injection wells have been the cause of earthquakes. This injection well will be rejected with how many gallons of toxic waste under what pressure over 10 years? I'm sorry, I didn't write those exact numbers down. But with this amount of toxic waste <clears throat> and under that amount of pressure, it could cause fractures in the earth, which could cause earthquakes. At Vickery, Ohio, a class action suit awarded surrounding landowners $30 million when their drinking water is contaminated 20 years after the well was closed. 20 years. There have been numerous reports of accidents, violations from many companies that have regulations to help protect the people. However, this does not protect the people when a chemical gets spilled or a tanker carrying wastewater to and from the injection wells <coughs> are involved in the accidents, which causes spills and people to be killed. Not to mention the drivers of these trucks getting sick from rashes and other illnesses. Our area <coughs> fire departments, the very people we call for help when we are at our most desperate, are ill-prepared for disasters related to gas and oil industries. In fact, I personally went for training on this and was told the fire department's job is to keep people away from the area and to keep the forest from burning as much as possible. And call us. We'll handle the rest. They're telling the fire department, stay out. Just keep people away. You can't do this. And that is only on the well pads that they claim, not the orphan well sites. So what happens to the people that are too close for this incident for the fire department to reach? I guess... They're the ones that the industry calls disposable. Well, you know what? I'm not disposable. My children, my neighbors, and my town is not disposable. Highland is not disposable. We all need to take a stand once and for all to stop the poisoning of our people, our land, our water, and our air. I did find the, the charters, so I'm going to make them up. Yeah, so I'll make okay. up the page. There's nine pages to it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking the seven, eight, nine right here. I'll take four, please. Hold on, they're not put together yet. Oh, right, there's six. Can I help you? Yeah, uh, yeah, these are already, I think these are already one through six. They're only one through six. Wait, wait, wait. They're only one through six. There are nine through six. Hey, John, why don't you adjourn so people can talk amongst yourselves? Yep, John. John. John, why don't we adjourn the meeting for it? All right. Well, we can get these over. So tell them to adjourn the meeting. All right. Oh, we can take a vote. Whatever we do. Yeah, we just need to take a vote. Okay. We have to take a vote. Make a motion that we vote on whether we move forward with this charter in the fall. Okay. I make that motion. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Yes. What are we? All right. We're going to make a motion to. Um, we're going to make a motion to accept the charter right now and not move on to the fall and rule on whether we're going to commence with the charter. Wait. What? Is that what we said? No. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just twisted the words. I'm, I'm, I don't yeah, the words. a lot. <laughs> I want to make a motion that we move forward with submitting this charter here in the for the fall. Oh, for the fall election. Vote. Bill seconded it. I seconded it, yeah. All in favor? All in favor. Now that I heard you this time. Yeah, sorry. I didn't hear her either. I was like, what? So I think okay. let the minutes reflect that all commissioners voted. John, I think all these are here. I'd also like to make a motion to adjourn. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye.